thought of the name Malayan because one of the inspirations in the creation of the school was our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal, the pride of the Malay race who once walked this part of the country just a little over a century ago. Our mission is to be a global steeple of excellence in professional education and research. MCL is the number one private school in Calabar Zone. Our mission is to provide a learning environment that would transform our students into globally competitive professionals. To produce social wealth from the generation of new talents. Excellence, loyalty, teamwork, discipline, and urgency. These are our core values. To me, MCL is home. Malayan is not just the buildings, the grounds, or the facilities. More so, it is the people who comprise the institution. The smile of a student when he realizes that he just learned something. The embrace of friends without whom one cannot leave. The values we instill, excellence and virtue. MCL is home. MCL is home. MCL is home. I am Malayan. I am Malayan. I am Malay. I am Malay. I am Malay. Hey, good morning sa ating lahat. Welcome to the fifth session of Viewpoints. Binabati ko po na magandang umaga ang mga new students na busy ngayon sa ating online submission of documents. Ganun din ang mga parents na tumututok dito sa online discussion na ito. Hatid po sa inyo ito ng Malayan Colleges Laguna ang Mapua School. I am James Ronald Messina, I did the Admissions Office and Registrar's Office and uh, binabati ko po kayo ngayong umaga na ito na sana ay maging makabuluhan ng ating pagtalakay sa mga isyu tungkol sa education under the new normal. So, sa ngayon po, meron tayong 24 attendees dito sa online meeting at sana ay madagdagan pa po ang ating mga participants habang uh, nag-uusap-usap tayo dito. Gusto rin man po namin na i-welcome kayo sa Malayan Colleges Laguna. Sarado po ang aming mga opisina because of the modified enhanced community quarantine na umiiral pa rin sa probinsya ng Laguna. Kaya medyo virtual muna po ang ating discussion, virtual muna po ang ating mga uh, pagtatanong at pagsagot. At pati po ang ating enrollment transactions will be uh, uh, processed by our dynamic team remotely. So ngayon po, uh, May 21, kalawang araw na po ng online submission of documents ng ating mga new students. And unahan ko na po kayo, medyo marami pong concerns. Sinasabi naman natin, this is the first time that we will do remote enrollment because of the pandemic. And it's not a perfect system, but it's always uh, open for uh, improvement and enhancement. So, Kung meron po kayong concerns, email nyo lang po kami para ma-assist po kayo ng admissions team members. So, welcome po sa mga magulang ulit sa mga participants. Kung gusto nyo po magtanong, makikita nyo po sa right side ng inyong screen, meron tayo dyan Q&A portion kung saan pwede nyo i-enter, i-type yung mga questions ninyo, comments ninyo, feedback ninyo. Pagkatapos po ng presentation, Babasahin po natin yan at doon po tayo magsisimula ng discussion kung ano po yung mga gusto nating malinawan about Malayan Colleges Laguna and tungkol sa ating open admissions and enrollment uh, procedures. So, simulan na po natin. 
Uh, ito po ay kalimang session na at sa mga nauna pong apat na session, napakadami pong mga bagay-bagay na nakuha namin sa mga magulang at sa mga bagong students. Dahil ito po ay nagbibigay sa amin ng feedback kung paano natin may improve pa lalo yung proseso. Mahirap po kasi na kami mga administrador ng eskwelahan, ang nakikita lang namin ay yung pananaw from the educational institutions eh kayo po ang aming mga stakeholders so dapat nakikinig din po kami sa inyo at tiyak na makakatulong yung inyong mga insights on how we can improve our educational services and that inspired us to conceptualize viewpoints so para po maintindihan natin paano nga ba nabuo itong viewpoints na ito ito po ay actually uh, isang programa wherein we want to engage in an online discussion the different stakeholders when we talk about education under the new normal. So, sa pamamagitan po ng isang diagram, uh, gusto ko pong i-explain how the viewpoints uh, framework uh, actually works for all stakeholders of Malayan Colleges Laguna. So, tingnan po natin ito. Pag sinabing viewpoints, marami pong sources yan from the government, from the parents, from educational institutions, and from the students. And, Magkakaiba po yan. Iba ang gusto ng magulang, iba ang gusto ng parents, iba ang gusto ng students. And we have different viewpoints, but ultimately, we want our viewpoints to meet at a certain point so that we can have common understanding and we can move forward. So that is the objective and purpose of viewpoints. So while we don't have representatives from the government to share the viewpoints from their side, Sa panahon po ngayon, under the COVID-19 pandemic, the government has been very active in posting press releases and advisories. And these advisories actually reflect the viewpoints of the government. At yun po ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon para maunawaan natin ang direksyon na binibigay ng pamahalaan through the Commission on Higher Education para sa mga kolehiyo at universidad and the Department of Education for Basic Education. Ang MCL po ay merong senior high school, kasunod po ng pagbubukas ng uh, senior high school noong 2016, tayo din po ay nagbukas niyan. Dahil gusto po natin na ibaba yung uh, level ng excellence in uh, delivering educational services sa grade 11 and grade 12. Kaya binabati ko po yung ating mga student applicants for senior high school, Ito pong uh, sharing na ito ay makakatulong, sana makatulong sa ating lahat para mas unang maunawaan natin ano ba ang senior high school, ano ba ang college under the new normal. So, isa na po natin. We have viewpoint number one, which is coming from the government. So, expect po na we will be sharing some slides from the Department of Education and the Commission on Higher Education as they have been very active these days to share their insights and perspectives about education under the new normal. So, our dear Deputy Secretary, Leonor Briones, gave this interview several days ago. Ang sabi po niya, we are going into a, into a new normal because we are creating a brave new world and we have to start with the children to give them courage, to give them the initiative to help look at problems realistically. And to continually have hope and confidence that we will overcome so on to the brave new world. Karugtong po niyan, sa isa pang interview, sinabi din niya, If we teach anxiety, if we teach fear, if we teach insecurity, and we are all fearful that we cannot move anymore and let's just wait for this thing to blow over. But we don't know when this thing will blow over. So in the meantime, we cannot have nine months of idle children being restrained in their homes, making them stay at home and having no classes, no learning at all because we are afraid. We have to work around that fear. Yan. So, napakalinaw po ng sinasabi ng ating Deputy Secretary. Sino po ba ang hindi takot sa COVID-19? Baka iba sa inyo, nadaanan na noong uh, Facebook post na 
sineshare ng mga isang grupo ng mga magulang na hanggat walang mass testing, itigil natin ang eskwelahan. Huwag natin buksan ang eskwelahan this coming August. Hanggat walang vaccine, hindi dapat magbukas ang mga eskwelahan. Nauunawaan po natin yan sapagkat ito po ay pananaw ng mga magulang na wala namang hinangad kundi maging malusog, maayos, ligtas ang kanilang mga anak. Sabi nga po ay safety first. So we perfectly understand that. But we need to strike the balance among many other issues and interests around. At yan po ang gustong ipaunawa sa atin ng pamahalaan na sineshare ko po ngayong umaga na ito sa ating mga participants. Talaga po bang maa-afford natin na tayo ay mabinbin, matenga na lamang ng siyam na buwan, sampung buwan, isang buong school year na hindi natin mapapasukay yung ating mga anak sapagkat tayo ay nabubuhay sa takot. Sabi po ng World Health Organization, mukhang COVID-19 ay hindi na mawawala sa lipunan, sa environment, para na siyang trangkaso na kailangan na natin i-manage, na kailangan na natin iwasan, kailangan ng maging bahagi ng common na sakit na nakaranasan ng mga tao. So, lahat po tayo ay nagdadasal na sana ay hindi ito totoo, sana ay hindi ito magpatuloy. Lahat po tayo ay natatakot. Hindi po sinasabi ng ating minamahal na sekretary ng DepEd na mag tayong matakot. Ang sinasabi po niya ay work around that fear. Kailangan po nating balansihin yung takot na yon bagamat tayo ay takot, hindi po sana ito mga hulugan na tayo ay hindi nakikilos at pipigilin na natin yung pagkakataon na yung ating mga anak ay matuto nang sila ay nasa paaralan. And our students could perfectly relate to this example. Naranasan naman po natin na tayo ay nagbakasyon, summer vacation for example, after 10 months ng schooling. Bakasyon tayo ng 2 months, then bumalik tayo sa eskwelahan ng June at July. Para tayong bisikleta na hindi nagamit ng ilang buwan, ang hirap ipidal. Ang hirap maka-regain ng focus, napakahirap matuto ulit, napakahirap mag-adjust ulit. 2 months pa lang po yun, lalo na po kung pahahabain natin yung bakasyon na yun, at sasabihin natin na isang taon, anak, huwag ka munang pumasok dahil may pandemya pa. So, yan po ang pananaw ng Department of Education. Ito po ay dinadagdagan pa lalo ng Commission on Higher Education na mensahe ng Chairman ng CHED, Dr. Prospero de Vera, para sa mga higher educational institutions, faculty members, and college students. So, sabi po ni Chairman ng CHED, the approach to education should be anchored on the premise that learning must continue. Quarantine or not, learning must continue and therefore it is everybody's responsibility to ensure that flexible learning, pag sinabi pong flexible learning, may maraming options na pwedeng i-offer ang mga educational institutions. Learning flexibly must be delivered during and after the crisis. Higher education institutions are repositories of innovation and the vanguards of change. Sa mga nagdaan pong araw, ang CHED po ay naging biktima rin po ng mga fake news na kung saan dahil sa napakarami mga sudyante ang may mga frustrations about online learning, marami po mga lumab lumabas na fake accounts na di umano ay galing daw sa CHED. Kaya nag-release po ng ganitong advisory. What really is the CHED saying about flexible learning options among colleges and universities? Is CHED saying that there will be no more online classes, no more online submission of requirements? Ang sabi ng CHED, under CHED advisory number 3, schools must deploy available distance learning, e-learning, and other alternative modes of delivery in lieu of residential learning. Pag sinabi pong residential learning, ito po yung traditional face-to-face -face classes na, na nakagisnan ng marami sa atin. Schools must facilitate alternative activities to enable students to complete practicum and OJT requirements. Higher education institutions must adjust the semester adapt different delivery modes of teaching and conduct make-up classes 
whenever possible. And this is, these announcements are actually applicable to colleges, universities, faculty members, and students in the higher education. So one, ter one term to summarize the pronouncements of the Commission on Higher Education is that the delivery of instruction in the college level must be coupled with flexibility. And to summarize both the DepEd and the Commission on Higher Education pronouncements about education in the new normal, ang sabi ko ng DepEd, education must continue. Ang sabi po ng CHED, quarantine or not, education, learning must continue. Yan. So, bagamat tayo po ay natatakot, bagamat tayo po ay napaka, may napakaraming agam-agam, dapat po na magpatuloy pa rin ang pagkatuto. Kailangan magpatuloy pa rin ang pag-aaral ng mga bata. Dahil po, kung tayo ay magpapadala sa takot, minsan naapektuhan po nito, madalas naapektuhan po nito ang pananaw natin sa napakaraming bagay. Unang-una, Nagiging ang tingin po natin sa bagay ay mga bagay-bagay ay pangmaiklian lamang o short term. Matatapos din ito after nine months, after one year, ano ang makakahabol pa rin naman yung anak ko after nine months, after one school year. Medyo short term po 'yon. Kaya ang sinasabi ng CHED at ng Department of Education, tingnan natin ang mas mahaba at mas malawak na senaryo na kailangan magpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga bata dahil sila ay inihahanda natin. Hindi lamang para sa mangyayari sa susunod na siyam na buwan, sampung buwan o isang taon, kundi sa mas uh, mataas at mas malawak na pangarap natin para sa kanila. So specifically po, the Department of Education has said that after consultations with the different stakeholders in the education sector, Classes will start on August 24, 2020. So may mga nagtatanong po na sa Malayan Colleges, Laguna po, kailan po magsisimula ang classes. So yan, pinost ko na po dyan. August 17, 2020, magsisimula po ang klase ng Malayan Colleges, Laguna. So, uh, ito po ba ay hindi violation ng ipinag-uutos ng DepEd na dapat ay August 24. Number one po, ang DepEd naman ay nag-uutos sa mga public schools na August 24 mag-start. Ang mga private schools po ay binibigyan ng certain degree of autonomy in terms of decision making kung kailan sila magbubukas ng kanilang skwelahan. So, sa Malayan Colleges Laguna po, August 17, pero malinaw po na tayo ay susunod sa DepEd na walang residential classes, walang face-to-face -face classes if we are going to start on August 17. So, paano po mag start We will have online classes at the time. Again, we are putting primary consideration to the safety and health of our students, teachers, and employees that is why, even though we will be opening the academic year in August 17, our physical classes will only resume once the DepEd and the local government allow MCL and other institutions to conduct face-to-face -face classes already. Okay, so yan po ay uh, nililinaw ko po na tayo ay susunod sa itinatakda ng gobyerno kung kailan lamang tayo pwedeng magsimula ng face-to-face -face classes. So, ano po ang magiging senaryo ng mga skwelahan under the new normal according to DepEd? Ito po yung nasa kasunod na slide. So, bagamat meron tayong uh, school opening, it is emphasized that distance learning will be a major component of learning delivery for the incoming school year. So, schools are working double time. Kami nga po, baka triple time pa to ready our system at the central and field units, referring to the schools po yan ng DepEd, to deliver accessible and quality 
distance education to our students, to our stakeholders. So, kasunod po niyan, the IATF resolved that schools must adopt various learning delivery options such as blended learning, distance learning, face-to-face, -face, homeschooling, and other modes of delivery depending on the local COVID risk severity classification and compliance with minimum health standards. Also, the conduct of co-curricular activities such as science fairs, showcase of portfolios, trade fairs, athletics and school sports, campus journalism, festival of talents will be suspended until further notice except for those activities that will be conducted online. So, napakalinaw po ng sinasabi ng kagawaran ng edukasyon. Flexible learning, different modes of learning delivery, kung gagamitin po natin ang terminolohiya nila, learning delivery modalities that must be available to our students once we open the school year this August 2020. So, what are these learning delivery modalities? Marami po kayong makikita niyan sa Facebook, sa mga website about different learning delivery modalities sa sobrang dami po nakakalito. Alin ba dito ang effective? Alin ba dito ang i-implement? Alin ba dito ang may mapapakinabangan ng anak ko bilang studyante? That is perfectly the objective of viewpoints. We want to have a meaningful discussion that is more focused on the specific needs, on the specific issues that you may want to bring on the table so that we can discuss further the welfare of your kids, our future students. So the first learning delivery modality according to the learning continuity plan of the Department of Education is blended learning. So ito po yung madalas nating naririnig. Pag sinabing blended learning, it limits face-to-face -face learning delivery Limits, pero hindi po nangangahulugan na tinanggal yung face-to-face -face o yung residential learning. Afford social distancing and decreases the volume of people outside their homes at any given time. Kaya po yung blended ay dahil siya ay kombinasyon ng face-to-face -face whenever allowed and online learning so that learning continuity will be assured. The second is distance learning, which is the most viable for independent learners and learners supported by periodic supervision of parents or guardians. This basically includes online platforms, educational programs through TV and radio, and printed modules. Kaya lagi po natin nadidinig sa mga comments at saka sa interview ng DepEd na sila ay gagamit ng TV at radyo sa pagtuturo sa papasok na school year. Meron na rin po silang nilunsad na DepEd Commons at ito po ay accessible sa estudyante ng public and private. So that's basically uh, what the DepEd will do in the coming school year. Ang ating pong third na learning modality is the homeschooling. It provides learners with equal, uh, equal access to basic education at home to be facilitated by qualified parents, guardians, or tutors who have undergone relevant training. Basically, homeschooling features the following. Families can educate according to their personal faith, philosophy, and values. Learning schedules may adjust to fit family schedules and circumstances. And we also have apprenticeship. This is uh, a program that provides senior high school learners with opportunities for actual immersion in workplace situations under the supervision of a certified practitioner. This is very appropriate to selected technical and vocational learning specializations that require more on-site learning and application of skills rather than academics. So basically po, yung ating mga learning modalities na yon apat plus yung panglima, which is the face-to-face -face session na tayo ay pamilyar na, 
because doon po tayo nasanay. In fact, yung face-to-face -face session has been our comfort zone when we talk about education. Face-to-face -face session has been our normal mode of delivery for learning ng mga studyante. Ang problema po, we are in a pandemic situation. The normal that we have been used to is now new. New normal, which means we need to make adjustments on how we will learn. Kaya para po dun sa mga sudyante natin na nakikinig ngayon, siguro yun ang number one na kailangan nating itatak sa ating mga isip. Under the new normal, meron tayong mga adjustments na kailangan gawin sa ating mga sarili, sa ating attitude, sa ating value, sa ating inclination and habit for learning. And definitely, bilang mga learners, kailangan nating mag-adjust. Mahirap, pero hindi imposible. Maaaring magtagal, pero at least nakakausad tayo ng pa isa isa dalawang hakbang. Those are the adjustments that we need to do. On the part of the schools, there will also be a lot of adjustments. On the part of the parents, yan din po siguro ang nais kong i-communicate sa inyo ngayong umaga. Kailangan po natin mag-adjust sa mga bagay-bagay upang mabigyan natin ng tsansa itong alternative flexible learning options na sinasabi ng Department of Education and Commu uh, Commission on Higher Education. Our second viewpoint, pagkatapos po natin ma-discuss yung viewpoints from the government, we will now move to the second viewpoint which is coming from the educational institutions. Ang sabi, there are a lot of learning environments under the new normal. So sa dami po ng nababasa at naririnig natin about the new normal, medyo i-focus po natin ng konti ngayon yung konsepto natin ng new normal doon sa education sector dahil bilang mga magulang na magpapaaral sa mga anak sa susunod na academic year. Napaka-importante po na maintindihan natin yung setup ng new normal in education. I'm saying that we will be sharing viewpoints coming from educational institutions. I just want to make a disclaimer as early as now na ito po ay sinishare ko po sa mga magulang at sa mga new students uh, bilang mga perspectives and insights of an educator. Ako po ay nagtuturo sa kolehiyo. Uh, ako po ay bahagi ng Malayan Colleges Laguna at ito po ay sinasabi ko uh, coming from Malayan Colleges Laguna itself. So bagamat yung ibang mga private educational institutions makaka-relate po dun sa mga isi-share ko, uh, definitely po mayroon silang ibang experience. Definitely po may iba silang stand pero as I said, ito po ay mga generic initiatives, generic viewpoints from educational institutions. And here I am representing Malayan Colleges Laguna. So number one, under the new normal, we need to have flexible learning spaces. Gone were the days that our concept of learning space is the school. Gone were the days that our idea of, flexi of learning space is only the classroom or the library or the computer laboratory. Tapos na po yung sitwasyon na yon, tapos na po yung panahon na yon. What we need now are learning spaces that are, number one, plural po yan. So marami, maraming learning spaces. And second, learning spaces that are flexible. Flexible enough to adjust to the needs of the learners. Flexible enough to accommodate the needs and wants of the parents and the students as they embark on this learning journey. Yun po ang ibig sabihin ng flexible learning spaces. Matututo sa skwelahan through face-to-face -face sessions once it is allowed by the government. Matututo sa library once physical classes are already allowed. Matututo sa internet through online learning. Matututo sa bahay through downloaded learning materials na ipinrovide ng mga skwelahan at pinapasilitate ng mga course instructors. Marami po ang magsasabi at mag-iisip na when we entered 
the era of online learning, e-learning, nawala na ang trabaho ng mga teachers, nabawasan na ang trabaho ng mga teachers, wala nang ginagawa ang mga teachers. I beg to disagree. Unfortunately po, when we entered that era, kami pong mga teachers, mas nadagdagan, mas dumami ang trabaho. We cannot say that we can all learn from YouTube. We cannot say na, bakit pa ako mag -e enroll kung ang ituturo lang ng school ay mga videos, tutorial na makikita sa YouTube o kung saan-saan man sa internet. Nawalan na ng trabaho ang teacher. Tama po ba? Hindi po. Sapagkat, nung nagkaroon po tayo ng e-learning, mas dumami ang trabaho ng mga guro. Bakit po? Kasi po ang World Wide Web, ang internet po ay isang napakalawak na arena, isang napakalawak na learning environment. The problem is, the World Wide Web is not a filtered learning environment. That means, napakarami pong mga information na hindi makukuha at hindi matututunan sa World Wide Web o sa internet. Kadalasan po, fake news pa at maling information, hindi accurate na information ang makukuha sa internet. Kaya pumasok po doon ang isang mahirap na role ng mga guro at ng educational institutions. Why? Because the teachers are now acting as facilitators of learning, not just instructors, and their number one role is to filter the information that students could get in the internet so that this information are aligned to what the students are supposed to learn. Pangsala, pangguide, para matiyak na yung mapupulot ng mga mag-aaral sa internet ay nakatahi, nakaugnay, nakaturo sa dapat matutunan ng mga estudyante. Sa YouTube lang, madaming home remedies, maraming home treatments na nare-recommend, maraming effective, maraming nagsusubscribe, maraming nagpo-follow. But when it comes to actual illness, for example, we still go to the doctor, we still go to the clinic, we still seek the help of a medical practitioner. And when we go to the doctor, the doctor will not tell us, you just go to the YouTube and you will be healed, you will be cured. Baka magalit tayo sa doktor pag yun ang sagot sa atin. Sasabihin sa atin ng doktor, actually you're not paying me or the hospital because of the Wi-Fi, because of the facilities, because of the good beds, because of the uh, class A uh, equipment of the hospital. Siguro ba yun, secondary. But you go to the doctor, you go to the hospital because you trust the expertise of the doctor. Something that you could not just learn or obtain from YouTube. That's also the same thing when we talk about education. That's also the same thing when we send our children to school. We're actually paying the expertise of the school because we trust its learning program and we, we believe that the teachers can deliver that uh, learning program effectively to the students. We trust that the teachers will filter the information, the sites, the content that the students can access in the web in an online learning environment. And with that, yung trabaho po ng teacher ay dumami. Kasi tayo, nung college, pag sinabi ng teacher, itong textbook lang na to ang gagamitin, tapos na. Hindi ka na pwede gumanap ng ibang references. Ngayon po, lahat ng references are readily available in the web, readily available in the internet. But, the teachers need to select, carefully select, and filter the information so that our children, the learners, will acquire one of the most important skill in the 21st century, which is information literacy. So, yan po ang role ng teacher ngayon under the flexible learning spaces which we are going to enter under the new normal. And I would say that Malayan Colleges Laguna is not new in setting up flexible learning spaces. Ma-share ko lang po itong maikling timeline about the history of Malayan Colleges Laguna as we embark in online learning for our students. 
We are a very young institution. We started in 2007 as part of the long-term development plan of Mapua University. At that time, it's Mapua Institute of Technology to expand its presence in the southern Tagalog region kung saan po merong mga technological and light industry science parks around na nando doon po ang mga manufacturing industries. Pag nagbukas ang manufacturing industries, kailangan yan professional and technical workforce. So, kailangan ng school. So, MCL is a wholly owned subsidiary of Mapua University. And when we opened in 2007, it's a very fresh start. But it did not stop us from venturing into meaningful ways to improve the delivery of instruction. That's why in less than two years, we already launched EMCL. It's our e-learning portal at the time. It's our LMS. LMS means Learning Management System. So, yung e-learning site po na ito ay binuksan namin to support the education program. Para yung mga bata ay hindi lamang natututo sa apat na haligi ng classroom. Pag-uwi nila yung mga PowerPoint presentation, lectures ng teachers, reference materials, electronic learning materials ay makukuha nila sa bahay whenever they access EMCL in the internet. We don't direct them to YouTube. We direct them to EMCL because what they get in EMCL are already what? Filtered sites, filtered learning materials that are all aligned in the instructional delivery program of the school. We are happy with Moodle, that's our LMS under EMCL, but it did not stop us again from uh, enhancing the flexibility of online learning. That's why in 2014, we started exploring an alternative learning management system and a year after, we purchased our license for the, the, for the use and deployment of Blackboard Learn, which is a license and proprietary learning management system. So, yung model po noong 2009, may bayad, or uh, rather, walang bayad, libre, pero noong 2015 po, we chose Blackboard Learn, may bayad po, hindi mura. In fact, medyo milyon din po ang binabayad ng skwelaan dyan, at ito po ay share, may share ang mga sudyante Dahil mas malawak po ang functionality ng Blackboard Learn. So in 2015, we launched that. And up to the present, the students are using Blackboard Learn for their courses in the senior high school and college. Bakit po libre na yung model lumipat pa sa Blackboard Learn? Have you asked yourself, para dun sa mga nakapunta na ng Singapore, ng Hong Kong, ng Korea, when you go to every train station, waiting shed, or any public area, minsan nga, pati 7-Eleven, merong free Wi-Fi connection. Just get the code, you connect to that uh, uh, access point, and you will get free Wi-Fi connection because the government has successfully implemented the national broadband program for the residents of that country. So, pero pag tinanong ninyo yung mga residente, Libre na pala ang internet sa public area, sa mga common na spaces. Bakit ka pa nagbabayad ng plan? Bakit ka pa nagbabayad ng broadband subscription sa bahay? Doble-doble yung bayad mo, meron namang libre. Sasabihin sa iyo ng tao, kasi yung mga libre na provided sa public spaces, maraming limit, maraming restrictions. Samantalang kung may subscription ka, walang limit, walang data cap, walang one hour na nag expire na kailangan mong mag-reconnect. So, minsan, ganun tayo. We do not want limitations because we want to enter limitless opportunities. We want to get those limitless opportunities. That's also the same thing when we talk about learning management system, when we talk about education. We want the best for the children we want to give them the limitless opportunities. We're happy with Moodle, but it has many restrictions. Hindi ka pwede mag-conduct ng synchronous lectures, kagaya nito, where in real time, the students and the teacher can interact. Hindi po pwedeng gawin yon sa Moodle. 
Hindi pwedeng gawin yon sa EMCL. Also, the type of assessments, the quizzes, assignments, and tests are also limited in Moodle. So, how can we say that we are getting supplementary learning materials and a learning management system that augments the learning experience? Kung medyo maraming limitations. Total, kaya naman na yung subscription with the growing number of students. In 2015, we have close to 6,000 students already. We divided the cost of Blackboard Learn so that we can subscribe. And for four or five years now, we are we are still using Blackboard Learn for our senior high school and college. Why? Again, similar to my example, to my analogy earlier, we want to provide as much as possible, limitless learning opportunities to our students. And that is the main purpose of Blackboard Learn, a licensed proprietary learning management system for our students. Now, in 2020, as we enter this pandemic situation, as we enter the new normal, we are organizing, we are restructuring the instructional delivery program, and we call it eFlip. Enhanced Flexible Learning Innovations Program. And I would like to invite everyone on Saturday, as requested by the parents, we'll have a walkthrough of Blackboard Learn, our learning management system, para makita ng mga parents ano ba ang kayang i-offer ng Blackboard Learn sa mga dadating na sudyante ng Malayan Colleges Laguna. Yung mga sudyante po natin ngayon na nag enroll they are already using Blackboard Learn in the submission of documents because we want them to get familiar with the use of the LMS so that when they embark to the actual learning activities, when they enroll at MCL, medyo hindi sila zero knowledge on the use of the learning management system which we call Blackboard Learn. So based on the timeline, that means that MCL is not new in delivering online learning to our students. We have been using it for more than a decade now, and we have a lot of success stories as regards how Blackboard Learn and our online learning program have actually developed a culture and habit of learning among our students and graduates. So, ngayon nga lang po na may pandemic, we got uh, licenses from Coursera. It's an online course delivery uh, system in the internet. Nagbibigay po yan ng mga certifications from different foreign universities. Meron sa UK, meron sa other countries in Europe, meron sa America, meron sa Japan, meron sa Korea. What we did was to share that to our alumni. And we are happy that we have close to 1,000 alumni who signified, signed up for the Coursera courses so that they can get an uh, online learning experience habang sila ay work from home, habang sila ay nasa bahay. So, yan ang sinasabi namin na ah, ito pala yung pag-develop ng culture and habit of learning among the graduates of Malayan Colleges Laguna. So, hindi pala ito bago. Sa totoo lang po, Nung uh, simula ang internet 30 years ago, sumunod na rin yung e-learning. Pag sinabing e-learning, electronic learning, learning everywhere, learning every time, learning in every way possible. Puro e, kaya e-learning. Sa Pilipinas, may university na sa Manila na nagsimula ng e-learning as early as 1997, when they launched the inter, uh, Integrated Virtual Learning Environment, another university subscribed to Blackboard Learn in 2004. I was a graduate of that university and I was one of the first batch to use Blackboard Learn in that university. That was in 2004 and what was the reaction of the people? Teachers do not want e-learning. Students complain that they do not learn in e-learning. Tama naman po. Problem is access. Problem is internet connection. Problem is availability of computer and the decent uh, internet connection in our homes. Sabi ng mga tatay, yung asawa ko, ako, nag-work from home. 
Isa lang ang computer sa bahay. Ano gagawin ko? Makikisabay pa yung anak ko. Dalawa na nag-online learning. Wala nang makagamit. Mabagal na ang internet. Ano gagawin namin? Sabi ko naman po, ay di mag-adjust. Di ba po? Bakit? Kasi ito na po yung panahon ngayon na sinasabing yung e-learning, yung online learning na kasama na natin 20 years ago pero hindi natin binigyan ng tsansa. Ngayon, iyon na po ang new normal. Yun na po ang magiging primary driver ng flexible learning options for our students. Di ba? So, ang, ang gusto ko lang pong sabihin, maybe this is the time that we need to give online learning a chance. Why? Because part of the skills that we may want to teach our students is to develop that pandemic and disaster mindset. That's a skill that is a competency. Ano po ang ibig sabihin nun? Di ba dapat pag may pandemya, pag may disaster, pag may kalamidad, lahat ng tao nag adjust Lahat ng tao binababaan, binabawasan ang mabibigat at sobrang lalaking expectations. That is very important in developing pandemic and disaster mindset. We should know that we need to adjust. We should know that we need to adjust in order to cope with the new normal. So, yung adjustment po, if that becomes a common mindset, that applies to all stakeholders. Government will adjust, business groups will adjust, parents and families will adjust, people, learners, students, schools, teachers will adjust. That is what we mean by pandemic mindset so that we can all cope with the new normal. Lahat ay kailangang mag-adjust. So, iba sa atin, dalawang buwan ang nasa bahay. Kaya naman palang mag-stay sa bahay kahit na tayo ay bagot na bagot at inip na inip. ba? Diba? So, pwede pala. Kaya naman pala. In-adjust lang natin yung ating activities. In-adjust lang natin yung ating mga schedules. In-adjust lang natin yung mga ginagawa natin regularly at hindi natin ginagawa so that we can cope with the enhanced community quarantine conditions. So let me share the adjustments that the school has been doing and uh, and uh, is willing to uh, continue in the next few months that we adjust, as we adjust to the new normal. So under the Enhanced Flexible Learning Innovations Program, we will be following these adjustments. We have the self-paced learning. So ano po ang ibig sabihin ng self-paced learning? nakasama noong Flexible Learning Innovations Program. Kanya-kanya na po ng pag-aaral yung mga bata. The school will provide the learning materials, the lectures, the online resources, but the children, the students at home will find a way on how they can actually absorb these learning materials, these learning experiences so that they can learn so that they can absorb the lessons. Are we saying that this solved the problem of connectivity to the internet? Obviously, no. Yung walang access, talagang walang access. Yung mahina ang connection, talagang mahina ang connection. Ang tanong po, tatanggapin na lang ba natin at wala na ba tayong gagawin na adjustment para ma-improve natin yung areas na yon at ma-support natin yung self-paced learning ng ating mga estudyante. Sa Cebu nga po, mayroong skwelahan, nagbigay ng schedule sa kanilang mga mag-aaral. Okay, the teachers will be uploading all the learning materials Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, students must load data to their mobile phones, tablets, or computers, to their routers, to their subscriptions. Mag-load kayo. Make sure that your internet connection is functional ng Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 
so that you can get the learning material, submit the assignments and assessments. Because on the next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday ulit, assignment, quizzes, and tests na ulit ang ibibigay. Is it working? Yes. Masaya ba ang students? Not all, but most of them are happy. So, ano ang moral lesson? May paraan pa lang pwedeng gawin. Time management, basic understanding of economics, managing resources, pati ang internet at data allocation po ngayon, resource na rin yan na kailangang i-manage. So, may paraan, may pwedeng gawin so that things will work out to our benefit. So, self-paced learning, kanya-kanyang pag-aaral sa mga sudyante. What the school can do and can provide is a learning management uh, system that will support self-paced learning and materials that will lead towards self-paced learning. Another adjustment that, that schools are giving out is the extended learning time. So previously, we said that to support online learning, extended learning time must also be implemented. Masyado kasi tayong nabuhay na maraming deadlines na maraming uh, time-bound assignments and tasks. Hindi naman po yun masama, pero sa panahon ngayon, kailangan natin mag-adjust. So, in the case of our students at Malayan Colleges Laguna, we move all our deadlines. Yung dating one week, two weeks, naging two months. So, ikaw na mag-aaral, ikaw na studyante, you submit the assessment whenever you are ready. You take the exam whenever you are ready. You submit the project, the reflection paper, the synthesis paper whenever you are ready. Why? Because extended learning time is connected with our self-paced learning adjustments so that we can cope with the new normal. Next, we have strict social distancing. Ito po ay madalas nating naririnig na laging sinasabi ng IATF, ng Department of Health, ng DepEd at ng Commission on Higher Education. Ulitin po natin na, hindi po sinasabi ng Malayan Colleges Laguna na tayo ay magiging online learning forever. Sabi nga ng mga kabataan, walang forever. So kapag pinayagan na po ang face-to-face -face learning, face-to-face -face classes, tayo po ay babalik doon. Pero susunod tayo sa mga safety and health protocols, unang-una na dyan, yung strict social distancing sa mga pasilidad ng paaralan, lalong-lalo na po sa mga classrooms. So what are the features of our programs under social distancing? Reduce class size. Some of you have already visited MCL in the past. And during the campus tour, you had the chance to see our lecture rooms, they are all uh, spacious enough to accommodate 40 to 45 students. But because of the social distancing requirements, we need to limit that to 20 to 25 students only. So, babawasan po natin yung class size. Kaugnay po niyan, we will be following shifting face-to-face -face class schedules. In our Q&A, may nagtanong na po kanina, Paano i-co-conduct yung classes, physical and online classes? Ano ang gagawin ninyo? So, yan nga po ang sagot. Shifting face-to-face -face class schedules. Itong section na to, Monday, Wednesday lang ang pasok. Itong section na to, Tuesday and Thursday lang. So, two or three days lang po papasok ang mga bata kapag allowed na ang, social, ang physical classes. And the remaining hours will be through flexible learning, through online learning that MCL has a very wide experience of implementing since 2009. We will also be providing additional auxiliary services for students. So, para po makita ninyo, ito po yung typical na example ng lecture room ng Malayan Colleges Laguna, yung picture sa kaliwa, makikita ninyo. That's very spacious enough to accommodate 40 students. But because of social distancing, makikita nyo po yung nasa kanan, we will be configuring the setup in the classroom in such way, a way 
that one meter by one meter uh, distancing uh, between student A to student B and student C and student D kung nasa likod at tagiliran ay masunod natin sa mga lecture rooms. So may malinaw pong plano ang Malayan Colleges Laguna for social distancing. We have enough rooms to accommodate students and still following the social distancing measures as prescribed by the government once the conduct of face-to-face -face classes or residential classes using the CHED terminology will be allowed uh, starting August. So, capable po tayo at makakaasa po kayo that we will be implementing those measures. Sir James, papano yung cafeteria, papano yung gym, papano yung mga hallway, papano yung mga hagdan? We are also preparing a blueprint for that. Yung mga stairways, one way pataas, one way pababa. Yung mga corridors, no, lo, strictly no loitering, isang direction lang sila maglalakad. Yung mga yung cafeteria, gagayahin natin yung ginagawa ng mga malls, ng mga supermarket na limited lang yung pagpasok sa loob by a certain number and once they are seated inside the cafeteria, uh, social distancing will also be uh, followed and implemented strictly. Bawat corner po ng MCL, kung nakapunta na kayo sa amin, may mga guards. Bawat corridor, bawat entrance, bawat common space, meron pa pong mga roving guards na gumagala sa paligid. So that will be part of the responsibility of the guards and the teachers also to be the agents of implementing social distancing among our students so that we can uh, make sure that they are not congregating uh, a small or big group na pwede pong maging dahilan ng pagpapasa-pasa ng infection ng COVID-19. So we are a 6-hectare campus. Definitely, we can implement social distancing. Plus, meron tayong shifting schedules and reduce class size, lalong-lalo po natin ma-implement ang social distancing sa loob ng Malayan Colleges Laguna. Now, naunawaan ko po, baka may mga tanong ang mga parents, paano gagawin natin sa transportation? Nakita naman po natin yung adjustment ng mga jeepney driver, kanya-kanyang creativity, kung paano i-implement yung dating 20-seater na jeep, magiging 10 na lang para merong spaces every other yung upuan. So, paano kaya yung mga bata pag bumalik? Natatakot ako mag-commute sila. So, we are actually providing shuttle service to our students. If you might see in the PowerPoint presentation, ayan po yung aming accredited shuttle service providers. Yan po, uh, existing na po yan for several years already. The problem is point to point po yan. So, ngayon po, baka magkaroon ng arrangement na hindi point to point, kundi door to door. Ibig sabihin, susundin yung mga bata sa mga bahay nila, dadalhin sa eskwelahan, pagkatapos ng eskwelahan, ibabalik sa bahay. Kasi ngayon po, yung door to door, they are only setting up pick-up points in Calamba, Calubang, Paseo, Santa Rosa, Car uh, Carmona, Binyan, San Pedro, and Muntinlupa. So, perhaps those will be maintained, but door-to-door -door shuttle service will be provided. Yun lang po, expect po natin na medyo magmamahal po yung service na yan because of the social distancing uh, measures. Uh, another one is, baka po humingi ng commitment yung ating mga shuttle service providers that they will be asking for a contract of maybe six months or one year. Sana po maunawaan natin na kailangan natin mag-adjust dyan dahil nag-adjust din naman yung mga drivers, yung mga shuttle operators. Nangunta nga naman sila para makabili ng van for the shuttle service. Tapos yung mga anak natin na in-apply natin ng service, after two weeks na makilala yung mga kaklase at may kasabay sa pagkukommute, biglang inabando na yung shuttle. So, mahirap naman po yun. So, tulungan niyo po kami na... Makasunod tayo dyan sa mga adjustments na yan. Sabi ko nga, dapat mag adjust tayo. Pati po yung mga shuttle service providers mag adjust so that we can uh, cope with the new normal as we send our children back to school this coming August. So that's the additional auxiliary service that we will be providing to our students so as to assure the parents that we are ready 
we are ready to accept students whenever face-to-face -face classes will be allowed by the government. We are ready to do online learning to our students for uh, less than a decade. We have been training our faculty members. We have been. So, ibig sabihin po, patuloy yan, continuous yan. Hindi po tayo uminto that we train our faculty members into becoming course developers, into becoming facilitators of learning. So, importante po na ang ating mga guro ay hindi lamang nagtuturo sa loob ng classroom. Dapat po sila ay merong competency, meron silang skill on how to develop learning materials, how to develop learning coursewares that are flexible enough to cater to the different needs of the learners. Again, ayan po ang isang bagay na binabayaran natin for Blackboard Learn to have that flexibility in delivering learning program and learning activities to our students. Yan po siguro yung isang limitasyon. I might be wrong. Ito po ay aking pananaw. Gusto ko lang pong ibahagi sa inyo. Yan po ay isa sigurong limitasyon ng radyo at ng telebisyon, yung flexibility na yon. Definitely, you cannot do an assessment in a TV or radio. Siguro magbigay ka ng quiz doon, sasagutan ng bata doon sa papel, pokolektahin ng teacher. So, may limitasyon. But in a learning management system like Blackboard Learn, you don't need a paper. You don't need any expository device detached from the learning management system. It can be served through Blackboard Learn. That's the content. Assessment will also be through Blackboard Learn. That's the uh, assessment of learning. That part, it will also be submitted to Blackboard Learn. And the evaluation of students will also be through Blackboard Learn. So, nando doon po siya sa isang comprehensibong learning management system that all these teaching and learning devices will be available. Sa radyo po at sa TV, pag meron kang hindi na intindihan medyo, hindi mo, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin doon sa, sa nasa TV o radyo, teka lang, hindi ko na intindihan, repeat. O kaya magtaas ka ng kamay kasi one way, monolog po pag TV at saka radyo. Pangalawa, uh, ang tabayanan mo yung oras nung live broadcast na yon sa TV o radyo. Sa Blackboard Learn po, hindi mo kailangan gawin yon kasi... Itong mga lectures na kagaya nito will automatically be recorded. It will be shared by the teacher in Blackboard Learn. All throughout the trimester, the students can always go back to the learning materials, review, refresh, and make him or herself learn that particular lesson. That is the flexibility of Blackboard Learn that we are paying for. That is the flexibility of the instructional program that Malayan Colleges Laguna Amapua School is offering to the students, to the prospective students, and we would like to assure the parents that we are capable enough in providing that IT infrastructure, that learning management system to support learning. We're not saying it's a perfect system. We're not saying it's done, it's the best. But we are say what we are saying is that we are capable to implement and roll it out what we need is the cooperation of the learners and the support of the parents. Give us feedback always so that we can improve and we can always enhance the limitless opportunities that we would like to offer to the learners. So, sana po ay malinaw po ang aking pagbabahagi ng uh, learning management system at ng instructional program ng Malayan Colleges Laguna. Para po mas ma-appreciate nyo po yan, we will be providing a walkthrough of Blackboard Learn and Blackboard Collaborate this coming Saturday. Also, as part of Viewpoints, 9.30 to 12 noon, join us again. And that time, we will not use Microsoft Teams. We will be using Blackboard Collaborate. The links will be provided in the events page of MCL Admissions Office uh, Facebook page. Punta po kayo sa events. Makikita nyo po doon yung link ng ating Blackboard Collaborate uh, session on uh, Saturday, that's May 23. We'll be talking about flexible learning options for MCL students and we will provide a walkthrough of how it is to learn 
in Blackboard Learn and Blackboard Collaborate. So our next uh, sharing is about the viewpoints from parents. And in this part, I would like to entertain questions coming from you in our Q&A. So mag-type lang po kayo sa ating live event Q&A. We will pick it up and we will answer the questions later. Yan po yung third viewpoint which is coming from the parents and the students. So ayan po ay live another Q&A, open forum. So allow us to answer your questions. So for the meantime, I would like para lang po matapos yung ating uh, sin, uh, ang ating uh, usapan, ang aking sharing, gusto ko po mag-iwan ng synthesis or summary. And I would like to share this photo to our uh, attendees uh, as of the moment. So this is photo is actually taken from our commencement exercises last July 9, 2019. Marami po na po kami graduation session Pero ito po yung isa sa pinakamalaki naming graduation because of senior high school. We have 1,200 senior high school students who graduated and we have 700 college students at the time. And as a teacher, as a school administrator, I'm always very ha I'm, I am always very happy along with the other colleagues in the academy whenever we attend graduation ceremonies and see students who are very happy in receiving their diplomas, their certificates. And around them are relatives, nanay, tatay, kuya, ate, lolo, lola, mga relatives, who are very happy also with their smiles on their faces, witnessing the conferment of the degrees and diplomas to their children. And it always reminds us of this African proverb, it takes a whole village to raise a child. We attend graduation sessions because we want to share the happiness of our students. We attend graduation ceremonies because we consider ourselves a part of the entire learning journey of the student. Ibig pong sabihin, when we talk about graduation, when we talk about raising a child, when we talk about success of the child, let us always remember that it is a shared responsibility. Malayan Colleges Laguna Amapua School has always been proud of our alumni. We are also very proud of parents who have trusted the institution that we can deliver the educational service that the learners, that the students well deserve. We have many alumni already who have been in significant roles in the industries and in their different organizations still doing research and development activities, still doing service learning and community engagements in the search of purpose and meaning in their lives. And whenever they do this, they make us all proud. But that pride is always a reminder that their success story is a shared responsibility. It takes a village to raise a child. Our alumni were now on these uh, portals of success because the entire community had that share of responsibility in reading the learner, in giving the limitless learning opportunities. So sana po, yung pong inyong mga anak, makita namin sa graduation, makita namin na successful, makita po natin na ito pala ang moment na yung shared responsibility ng magulang, ng bata, ng mag-aaral, ng learner, shared responsibility ng community, ng government, ng teachers, ng educational institution, nagpanapanag po, nagkita-kita para magkaroon tayo ng success story for our students. So it takes a village to raise a child. To conclude po, this is the new normal, but the attitude of shared responsibility continues. Now the question is, what adjustment do I need, do I have, and am I willing to take and to give so that we can have our own success stories towards the end? So thank you very much for joining and allowing me to share these insights 
about how Malayan Colleges Laguna uh, will be uh, sharing the new normal with you as we provide the flexible learning options, online learning and blended learning for your kids, for your children, our new students for academic year 2020-2021. So maraming salamat po. Now, we will now open the floor for questions. We'll move to the uh, next viewpoint which is the viewpoint from parents and learners. So, uh, just type in your questions po and I, I will be answering them one by one. Okay, good morning po. So, here are the questions we've gathered throughout the session. So, first four regarding sa start of enrollment and classes. When is the start of classes? When is the start of enrollment? And how do we enroll and what is the setup for enrollment? Ayan. So, thank you very much po for this question. Gusto, gusto ko po yan kasi yung mga tanong na yan, ibig sabihin ay interesado mag-enroll. Di ba po? So, ibig sabihin, hindi nasasayang yung aming uh, effort to reach out to the parents and talk about these things. Definitely po, we are happy to welcome you at MCL. Enrollment is ongoing. Last April 29, we already opened the pre-enrollment survey for our students. So, ongoing po yan. Uh, mahaba lang po ng medyo yung ating guidelines for enrollment. But that is posted in the MCL website, www.mcl.edu.ph. In the homepage, please click the Open Admissions banner and that will direct you to the Guidelines for enrollment. All transactions are being done remotely. Wala po tayong office transaction. Sarado po ang mga opisina. So, our enrollment team will be accepting all these transactions remotely. So, para po mag-guide kayo, ayoko naman po kayong bigyan ng maraming detalye dahil baka may information overload po kayo. Tingnan po natin yung guidelines sa website. So, ongoing po ang ating enrollment. We're on open admissions. Para po sa nagtatanong, paano mag entrance exam yung bata? Wala na po tayong entrance exam ngayon because of open admissions. That means, once you have accomplished the online admission and the pre-enrollment survey, you can enroll already. Hintayin nyo lang po yung aming notification through email or through Blackboard Learn course message that you can already process your enrollment. Gusto ko lang pong linawin, ulit, magkaiba po yung online admission doon sa pre-enrollment survey. Yung lahat po ng nag-entrance exam, nakatitiyak po tayo na sila ay nag-online admission na. Ito po yung pinilapan ninyo na electronic form sa website. So, kung naipasan nyo na po yun, dahil nakapag-entrance exam na kayo, gawa na. You are already done with the first part or step one. The next procedure is for you to answer the pre-enrollment survey. Ulitin ko po, magkaiba po yung application form, online application or online admission, magkaiba po iyon sa pre-enrollment survey. Pero kailangan nyo pong ma-accomplish parehas yung dalawa na yun. Parehas po yan nasa website para po hindi tayo may information overload check the complete guidelines posted in the MCL website. So, salamat po sa nagtanong. We can proceed with the next uh, question. Meron ako mga nababasa dito na iba. What is the load of classes? Nasagot ko na po yan kanina. Shifting class schedule po tayo. Meaning, 2 to 3 days lang po ang pasok ng mga bata. Then, yung nakulang, ulang na contact hours will be through online. Yes, next, next question tayo. Next question po, can I still proceed with enrollment even if I did not pay for the reservation fee? And when is the yes deadline po. for... Yeah, so pwede po tayo mag-enroll even without the reservation fee. Ang difference lang po niyan, yung mga nakapagbayad ng reservation fee hanggang uh, April, hanggang May 2, 2020, sila po ay merong privilege of choosing their preferred section, especially for senior high school. 
And also, since they already reserved, we are giving them the flexibility to enroll until July. Basta po kami ay notified kung kailan yung target date nila ng enrollment so that we can retain, we can keep the reserve slot for them. Ngayon, yung hindi po nakapag-reserve, diretso na po kayo ng enroll. Dahil sabi ko nga po, ay online, on, uh, open admission tayo. Pero yun nga lang po, first come, first serve na po tayo if we have preferred sections for senior high school. So, ang deadline po ng ating enrollment, wala pa po tayong siniset, ongoing nga po yan, depende rin po yan sa ating magiging condition since we are still under the modified enhanced community quarantine. But what we are suggesting is that you enroll ASAP. Bakit po? Number one, we want you to get the slots immediately and for, or, uh, for you to do that, we want you to enroll. Number two, we want to prepare your kids, your children, our future students on how they will go towards online learning and other flexible learning delivery options. Kaya po gusto namin yung enrolled students between June hanggang August, mabigyan namin ng orientation online kung paano mag-blackboard learn, ano ang school rules and regulation, ano ba yung mga dapat nilang malaman under the new normal. Kami po ay committed na ibigay sa anak ninyo yung preparation na yan so that before we start the school in August 17, 2020, meron na po tayong nailatag na pundasyon doon sa new students para ready na sila pagsabak doon sa ating uh, alternative learning program starting August 17, 2020. Ulitin ko po, mag-enroll na po sila hanggat maaga para po makapasok na sila doon sa ating uh, new student orientation at yung mga courses na dinedevelop natin para sa mga estudyante. Noon nga lang pong face-to-face -face session, kung meron kayong mga anak kakilala, kamag-anak na pumasok sa MCL simula noong 2007, every summer, meron po kaming summer camp. Yung mga new students, pinapapasok namin sa summer camp for free. Sila po ay umaaten ng bridging lessons sa science, sa mathematics, sa drawing, para kahit pa paano, magkaroon na sila ng patikim, magkaroon na sila ng adjustment, magkaroon na sila ng bridging program para pagdating nila sa college, pagdating nila sa classroom, hindi sila makulture siya. So ngayon po, itutuloy po natin yan, bagamat wala tayong face-to-face -face na summer camp, we will have it online. And yan po ay nakadepende dun sa mga students enrolled. Kaya again, I would like to reiterate and encourage all our reserved and non-reserved students to enroll as soon as possible so that they can join the online bridging learning programs for new students. Napakaganda po ng programa na yan. So, uh, marami pong matututunan din dyan yung mga bata at ito po ay tiyak na preparation for them para hindi sila malula, ma mabigla pagdating ng uh, start of classes in the first trimester. So, salamat po sa nagtanong. Next question po, my child's schooling was halted due to the ECQ. When will be the next enrollment schedule of incoming grade 11 students if we cannot comply with the requirements prior opening of classes? Yeah, napakaganda katanungan po niyan. Sa guidelines po, specifically po, sinabi ko po yan na we understand that there are still a lot of localities under the Modified Enhanced Community Quarantine. Secondly, there are a lot of restrictions even though the communities, cities, and municipalities are under the GCQ already. Some schools are still closed. Sa, kagaya nitong case na to, inabutan ng uh, ECQ, hindi pa tapos yung school year. Pa, paano nga naman mag -e enroll kung lilipat ng school? Meron na pong in dyan ang Department of Education noong pang 2018. That's the Basic Education Enrollment Policy uh, released in school year 2018. And it clearly states that in the absence of the report card from the previous school, the, the, the current school may accept enrollees provided 
that the parents will execute an affidavit of undertaking. The affidavit of undertaking states that they are committing to submit the required documents before August 31 of the new academic year. And the condition is that when you enroll without the documents, you will be considered temporarily enrolled in the school system. So, malinaw po, tatanggapin po namin kayo kahit wala kayong report card. But you need to sign the affidavit of undertaking. We use the same DepEd template. Second, you need to commit that you will submit the report card the, soon, the soonest time that it will be available. So, pwede po kayong mag-enroll. Kaya lang, gusto ko pong hingi ng pangunawa at kooperasyon ng mga magulang na yung magpapasa po ng mga documents, wag naman po sana natin gawin na dahil online, pagkapasa natin sa isang school, later on, lilipat pala siya, gagamitin din yung same document for another school. Huwag kakaproblema po kayo niyan. Dahil ang DepEd po ngayon ay meron ng LIS, Learner, uh, Learner Information System. So once you enroll in this school, uh, i-enroll na rin po kayo sa LIS. So pag kayo ay lumipat ng hindi binabawi yung enrollment ninyo from the previous school, pag pag-graduate na po yung anak ninyo, magkakaproblema po yung school na nilipatan ninyo dahil hindi kayo sumunod dun sa protocol ng DepEd. So, sundin po natin yon Pag nagpasa po tayo ng report card, bagamat ito ay electronic copy, uh, let us assure the school that it is a commitment already that you will enroll the son, your son or daughter to that school for grade 11 or for college so that we will not have any problem later on in reporting your uh, children uh, in the in our report, uh, reportorial responsibilities in CHED and DepEd. Pero pwede po, you will just be considered temporarily enrolled and your deadline for submission of the documents will be August 31 of this year, which is uh, school year 2020-2021. Thank you po for the question. We can proceed with the next. Next question po, my documents are incomplete. Can I proceed with my enrollment? And how do an applicant submit the requirements online? Yeah, so again po, medyo marami po yung detalye. Pakicheck po yung website for the guidelines. Once you have accomplished the pre-enrollment survey form and the online ap admission application form, we will be giving you already the student number. Yung student number po ang gagamitin ninyo sa Blackboard Learn. Sa Blackboard Learn po kayo magsasubmit ng mga requirements ninyo. Kung meron po kayong incomplete requirements, kagaya po na nasabi ko, you will be required to submit an affidavit of undertaking. We will enroll you, but your status will be temporarily enrolled. Later on, you can correct that. We can make it regularly enrolled provided that you submit to us the requirements such as report card, a birth certificate, and other enrollment credentials needed by the school. Next question. Next question, Paul. Is the online enrollment applicable to existing MCL SHS students entering college? And do we need to submit again the requirements we turned over to MCL during his or her grade 11 enrollment? Okay, hindi na po kailangan. So, I'm happy that we have a senior high school students listening in our forum now. Hindi na po kailangan dahil uh, yung mga dokumento nyo yung pinasa two years ago, siguro naman parehas pa rin yung birth certificate ninyo. Hindi naman po yan nababago. Unless merong change of name, change of initials, change of suffix, mga ganun po. May junior, may the third, na bago. Pag gano'n po, kailangan nyo mag-resubmit sa amin ng new documents. Pero kung wala pong changes, no need to submit. For our grade 12 students, we just need your report card. So we just need your report card. Eh, tandaan po natin, ongoing pa yung ating third term. So nangangahulugan na kailangan nating tapusin yung third term, which will end July 4. That's why for all MCL senior high school students, we are uh, dedicating a uh, specific enrollment period for you 
which is July 15 to July 30. Again, July 15 to July 30, yan po ang enrollment period for Malayan Colleges Laguna grade 12 students who will be entering college also at MCL. No need to resubmit documents. Next question. Next question. Will there be a decrease in fees given the lesser use of facilities? And how much is the revised school fees for college and SHS? Okay. So, meron po akong dalawang good news na isi-share sa inyo. Number one, last December, we applied for a tuition fee increase because uh, uh, as part of our improvement and development as an educational institution, yun naman po makakatiya kayo na MCL is really investing, pouring out resources for the improvement of facilities, uh, softwares and licenses, infrastructure, lahat po yan ini-improve, may gastos po yan. And we need to... Uh, increase the tuition fee for the next year. But, asan ang good news doon? mag increase pala kayo. Ito pa lang po. Ang good news po ay hindi namin itutuloy yun. Because of our empathy with our uh, stakeholders, this is not the right timing for us to increase the fees. So, we will not increase the fees for academic year 2020 and 2021. So, nakamenos na po kayo doon. Mga nasa 5,000 din po yun kung na-implement. Second, we will be adjusting the miscellaneous fees. Uh, we are working on it now to adjust miscellaneous fees and laboratory fees by 20%, less 20%, so that yung mga charges na hindi applicable at hindi magagamit ng sudyante dahil may online learning, tinanggal na po namin yon, tatanggalin po namin yon, kaya mas babawas po, mas nilid po yung ating cost of education at MCL. Currently po, Ang senior high school natin ay nasa 75,000 per year. Ang college po natin ay nasa 33 to 36,000 per trimester. So, ito pong current na to ay mababawasan pa. Panalangin po natin yung hanggang 20% na ma-identify namin yung mga charges na pwedeng hindi singilin sa mga magulang para mas bumaba po yung ating fees for the coming school year. So, yun po yung aking dalawang good news. No tuition fee increase. And second, we will be reducing the fees, waiving some, partially waiving some charges because of the alternative learning delivery modes that we will be implementing. So, maraming maraming salamat po sa nagtanong and you can be assured that MCL is sensitive enough to this uh, situation, yung ating mga nararamdaman at this moment. And kung ano man po yung sinisingil sa mga magulang, ipinapangako po namin na ito po ay i-deliver namin sa inyo na inyo in terms of uh, educational excellence. Inihingi lang po namin yung uh, suporta po ng mga sudyante by uh, uh, giving us their support and cooperation in the online learning and also for the parents to monitor and support also the school as we adjust to the new normal, specifically in our learning environments. Next question. Next question po, do you accept PAYAC voucher for incoming grade 11 students and will MCL help us process the vouchers? Ayan po, so yes po, we are accredited po to accept vouchers issued by the government. Uh, anong tulong po ang magagawa namin for you? Unfortunately po, we can only share with you announcements and advisories about the opening of the online application for the voucher and to give you the procedures for application because that is personal. Ano po ang ibig sabihin? Pupunta po kayo dun sa website ng PAYAC, dun po kayo mag apply May personal information po na required dun, hindi po namin alam yon. So, hindi po namin kayo matutulungan dun sa online application because of data privacy restrictions. Kaya na talagang kanya-kanya po ang pag apply ng PAYAC voucher. Pero madali lang po yun dahil online lang din. Pag nasend nyo po yan, bibigyan kayo ng QBR, Qualified Voucher Recipient Certificate, and you will screenshot, screenshot nyo po sa phone o sa computer, yung QBR certificate niyo email nyo sa amin, so that we can validate it and apply to the charges assessed for the student. Last year po, June 6, 2019, nag-open yung voucher application. 
Hindi po natin alam ngayon kung same pa rin. Sana po magbukas ng maaga. So, pwede po namin kayong share ng information dyan through the MCL Admissions Office uh, page. Uh, we will share the information there kapag open na and procedures. Pero ganun nga po, kailangan po talaga kanya-kanyang application tayo for the payak voucher. Ngayon, sir, Sir James, kailangan ba hintayin ko yung payak voucher bago ako mag-enroll? Pwede po, pero kung ako po ang tatanungin, yung payak voucher naman po kasi ay hindi rin 100% covering the tuition fees for Malayan Colleges Laguna. So, ibig sabihin po, maglalabas pa rin po tayo ng konting halaga for the enrollment of our uh, children. So, kung ganun din lang po ang sitwasyon, baka po pwede i-enroll na natin sila ng maaga. Then, pag lumabas yung voucher, saka natin i-apply. Kung may outstanding balance, i-apply natin yung voucher. Pag walang outstanding balance dahil nag-full payment kayo, we will refund yung overpayment ninyo because of the payak voucher. So, bakit po gano'n ang aking rekomendasyon? Kasi po, nagkakaubusan ng slots, especially for senior high school. So, malaking tulong po kung may i-enroll nyo na po sila agad. That's one. And second, para po yung bata nakakapag-participate na doon sa ating bridging learning program for them in preparation for their uh, stu uh, student learning experience at MCL starting August. So, yun po ang dahilan. Kung makakapag-enroll din lang naman po ng maaga, i-enroll na natin. And later, we apply the value of the payak voucher. Yan. We can proceed with the next question. Next question po, how can I get my email and password for Blackboard Learn to submit my requirements? And what happens after submitting an online application? What are the further instructions? Ayan po. Pag sinabi ko po yan, lahat po na maaan po yan, mga tatlong oras po uling explanation yan, Kung ipapaliwanag ko po yung mga what happens na yan. So, balik po tayo sa guidelines. Nandun po ang mangyayari at yung next step. Paano makukuha yung password and blackboard learn? Nandun po yung online viewing of credentials. So, madetalya po yun. Kaya hindi ko po ma-share dito. Uh, bukod po doon, kahit nasabihin ko naman, hindi naman natin makakapture then point by point. So, balik po tayo sa guidelines. You need to view your credentials. You will be given your student number and default password. You will use the default password and username or student number to access Blackboard Learn. You will submit the requirements to Blackboard Learn and after that, uh, maghintay po kayo ng uh, at least 4 to 5 days so that you can process your enrollment and you can pay through off-site payment channels. Yun lang po ang pakiusap ko talaga. Adjustment po natin yan lahat. Actually, kahit hindi pandemic, kahit hindi ECQ, hindi GCQ, palagay ko po, dapat po i-develop po natin yung culture and habit of reading and understanding the guidelines kasi kaya po namin yan binibigay para tayo po ay magkaroon ng step-by-step -step, uh, procedures na pwede nating sundan. Yan. So, balikan po natin yung guidelines. Kompleto po yun. Pag hindi nyo po nakuha pa rin yung credentials, email nyo po kami admissions at mcl.edu.ph Kagahapon po, inulan po kami ng emails na hindi nakukuha yung kanilang credentials, hindi nakukuha yung kanilang student number. Upon investigation po, nakita namin na minsan yung mga email addresses nyo po kasi system generated yung pagsisend namin ng credentials. May mga blockers yung inyong mga email settings. Minsan naman yung internet connection ninyo. So, palagay ko po, wala kami magagawa doon that, dahil yan ay problema on your end. Bukod po doon, yung mga nag-apply ng November, December, January, ginamit yung email address na yon to apply for whatever reason. Nalimutan yung password. Hindi na ginamit yung email na yon Nagpalit yung e ng email address. Marami pong ganong bata. Parang ginawang libangan ang paggagawa ng Gmail or Yahoo account. Iba ang email pag MWF at TTHS. Tapos nalimutan yung password, hindi na ma-access. Tapos kinakalampag kami to get the credentials. Eh, sinend namin yun doon sa kanilang lumang email. So, maraming problema pong ganun. Gusto rin naman, gusto rin naman po namin solve yan. Medyo ang problema po nandun sa end ng studyante o sa end ninyo. Pero may solution po dyan. We are flashing our contact numbers, our email address. Email nyo po sa amin. May hinihingi po kaming detalye. Complete name, uh, date kung kailan nag-apply, 
uh, email address na ginamit na ban application. Pag na-verify po namin yon, ibibigay namin yung mga access code so that you can uh, access Blackboard Learn and submit documents. So, may mga ganun pong problema. Hindi po namin tinatanggi yun. Gusto yun po namin isolve yun. Pero nandun po yan sa end ninyo. At wala po tayong magagawa ngayon sa bagay na yun. Kasi kung i-investigate nyo pa yan at babagoy nyo naman yung email address nyo, lalo po yung hindi yun makakatanggap ng uh, authentication code, hindi makakatanggap yun ng credentials. So, ang solution po, email nyo po kami. We are flashing our contact number since all our offices are closed. You can contact us via our mobile numbers. Wala pong sasagot sa mga landline calls. Meron po mga tumatawag na pa-apat-apat, palima-lima everyday. Hindi po namin yung nasasagot kasi sarado po ang mga offices. Naralaman lang po namin because of the call logs at saka yung narinig ng security. So hanggat maaari po, kontakin nyo po kami through email and our mobile phone numbers that we have been posting simula pa kanina. Maybe Mia, we can share the contact numbers to our... Uh, participants so that they can take note. Meron po kaming globe, smart, and kung medyo mahaba po yung detalye, uh, email nyo po sa amin para pag nag-reply kami, makapture namin yung sagot dun sa mga tanong ninyo. Yan. So, feel free to contact us through our mobile numbers. Kung maraming detalye, ganun po siguro, pagka-quick question and answer, pwede mag-text, pwede tumawag, Pag medyo madetalye yung tanong, email us at admissions at mcl.edu.ph Pero ito po ang pinakamabisang quick response sa inyong mga tanong. Basahin po yung guidelines na nasa website kasi kompleto po yun. Actually, minsan yung mga sagot namin sa tanong ninyo sa email at sa phone, kinukuha lang din namin dun sa guidelines. Kasi nga po, po nandun na. So, para po hindi kayo natatagalan, hindi kayo naiinis, hindi kayo nai-stress, yun naman pala ay hindi lang tayo nagbasa, balikan po natin yung guidelines. Dalawa nga po yan na pwede nyo tingnan. Meron tayong guidelines, meron tayong FAQs. Frequently Asked Questions. Nasa website po yan, hindi namin po yan isi-secret, nakapost po yan. I-review po natin para tayo ay guided in open admissions and enrollment process. So, meron po dito ang nahihirapan, malaman yung breakdown of costs for the prepared course ng anak ko. Kasi gusto ko malaman kung magkano ba bago ako mag-enroll. Kung breakdown po ang inyong inihingi, yun nga po, kinakalibrate po siya because of the adjustments, hindi namin mabibigay sa ngayon. Pero ang tinatanong nyo po ay magkano ba? So, kung senior high school po, 75,000 a year, bababa pa po ito dahil sa adjustments na ginagawa namin. Pangalawa po, wala po tayong increase ng tuition. So, 75,000 for senior high school. For college, 33,000 to 36,000 per trimester. Okay, klaro po tayo doon. Yung breakdown po, best effort po pag available na, i-email nyo po kami sa admissions.edu.ph Ayan po. Siguro ang nagtatanong nito nanay. Kasi breakdown. Tama po ba ako? Yung mga nanay, lagi ang may tanong sa... Kada po may Saturday orientation ako, ang nanay, breakdown ang tanong. Ang tatay, ang tanong kabuuan. Diba? So, huwag po kayo ma-open. Sinishare ko lang po. So, wala namang masama dyan, di ba? Gusto nga po namin na nagtatanong kayo. Kasi yung mga nagtatanong kadalasan ng mga ganyan, yan yung natutuloy mag-enroll. So, gustong gusto po namin yan na nagtatanong kayo ng mga finance-related questions. May nagre-request po ng electronic certificate para dito sa session. Pwede naman po. Kaya lang, ito kasi ay online meeting lang. Pero... Para sa iba na ang PEG dito ay webinar, pwede din naman po kami magbigay ng certificate. Email nyo po kami. Yan. Kung credited po ba ang ESC sa tuition fee at the moment, kagaya po ng sinabi ko, hindi pa nga po kasi bukas yung... Uh, anda, but this is ESC. Wala pong ESC sa grade 11, ha? Sabihan, kabihin ko lang po. Ang meron po ay senior high school voucher. Baka ang mas tamang tanong po dito ay 
Yung anak ko kasi ay ESC grantee. Galing dito sa school na to na ESC provider. Ano ang gagawin ko? Tama yung tanong. Request po kayo dun sa pinanggaling yung eskwelahan ng certification na yung anak ninyo ay voucher recipient o ESC grantee at pangalawa yung eskwelahan ay ESC accredited. Ipadala nyo po yan sa amin para po pag nag-enroll kayo, adjusted na yung fees ninyo, applied na yung voucher na yung value ng voucher sa babayaran ninyong tuition. So para po sa mga nalilito, siguro yan lang po ang dalawang pwede na nating i-apply na senior high school voucher upon enrollment. Number one, yung graduate ng public school, automatic and voucher recipient. Walang certificate, bigay niyo yung report card. Alam na namin yon na mag apply kami ng voucher doon. Pangalawa, kapag yung anak ninyo ay graduate sa isang school na ESC, granting institution, ENC, ESC provider, yon maghingi po kayo ng certification present to us during the enrollment so that we can apply the voucher value to the assessment of fees. Ano po yung birth certificate from NSO or municipal? NSO, National Statistics, Auto, uh, National Statistics Office. Ngayon po PSA na, Philippine Statistics Authority. So, eto po yung birth certificate na nakaimprenta sa security paper ng PSA or NSO. So, may makikita po kayong mga example niyan sa internet. Pwede niyo pong i-search para makita ninyo. I-re-request niyo po yan online, i-deliver. Hindi ko lang po tiya kung available ngayon yung service na yon dahil uh, ECQ pa nga po. Pero ang good news po niyan, kung hindi pa po yun available, magpasa lang po kayo ng ano bang birth certificate meron kayo? Municipal, galing sa local civil registrar, pwede po yan. May passport po ba yung bata? Pwede po yan. Mala, ma, uh, flexible po tayo sa requirements na yan. Naintindihan po namin, hindi naman makakabibigay ng passport yung bata kung wala namang birth certificate. So, wala namang birth certificate yung bata kung, pinang, hindi, kung pinanganak na hindi buhay. Di ba po? So, naunawaan po namin yan. Marami pong alternatives. Maganda po na na-erase ito. Pero, yun nga po, nabigay ko yung example, ipapasa nyo po yan online. Pag wala, pwedeng local civil registrar, pwede rin pong passport. Meron pa ba tayong ibang questions? Again, let us flash our contact numbers para sa kaalaman ng ating mga parents and enrollees. Yan, feel free to contact us, take note of our numbers, huwag po tayong tumawag sa landline dahil wala pong sasagot. Pwede po bang magpasa kahit hindi pa complete ang report card hanggang midterm? Pwede po, makalagay din po yan sa guidelines. Ipasa nyo po yan, you will be considered temporarily enrolled. And once the report card, the complete report card is available, we will... Change your status into regular enrollment. Ano po yung mode of payment for enrollment? Pwede rin cash or full payment. Pwede rin pong installment. Sorry, I'm late. I just received the notification. What will be the platform use in the opening of classes? Is it face-to-face? -face? Sabi po natin, meron tayong learning management system, which is Blackboard Learn. That's the platform. That's the LMS. Face-to-face -face po, pag allowed. Pag hindi po, may capability po tayo to implement online. So, huwag po natin pwersa yung mga batang pumasok kung kayo ay hindi komportable sa safety and health na susuungin niya yung condition ng health and safety. Decide po, call the shots. Uh, choose online. Nasa sa inyo po yung pagpampasya na yan. And uh, we are uh, equipped with the infrastructure and the learning management system to support online learning. But then again, if face-to-face -face classes will be allowed by the government, we are very much willing and very much competent to open face-to-face -face classes in the 
campus. Ayan po. So, meron pa po ba tayong ibang mga questions? Pearl? Yes po, sir. Uh, next question po, what is the load of classes for college freshmen, online and or physical classes, and do you also have weekend classes? Ayan, wala po tayong weekend classes. Uh, for college po, may Saturday, ano yung weekend? Saturday and Sunday. College, meron po tayong Saturday. Yung senior high school po natin, Monday to Friday lang. Ngayon po, kung halimbawang, uh, madal nga sabi natin, magsishifting tayo ng class schedule, 2 to 3 days lang po papasok yung mga bata. So, we'll try to arrange po na maiwasan natin yung Saturday. Kasi nga, gusto natin kontrolin yung exposure ng bata na lumalabas siya. So, pwede po, nanirace nyo yung feedback na yan. Kaya po tayo may viewpoints. Sabihin nyo po sa amin yung mga wish list ninyo. Hindi po namin siya sabing lahat yan isusundin namin. Pero at least po, pwede tayong magkaroon ng tiyatawag na win-win solution. We can arrive at a win-win solution. We can at arrive at a common understanding on how we can adjust certain things about uh, adjusting to the new normal in senior high school and college at Malayan Colleges, Laguna. Di po nagana yung BBL email and password na binigay nyo po. Wala po kami binigay na BBL email. Ayan po, baka nalilito kayo ha. Sabi ko nga po, basahin yung guidelines. Yung email address na binigay sa inyo, hindi nyo gagamitin yun sa BBL. Gagamitin nyo yun sa 1MCL, which is online enrollment na hindi natin gagamitin for new students. Nililinaw ko po, nasa guidelines po yan. Ang gagamitin nyo for enrollment ay Blackboard Learn. Ang Blackboard Learn ay ma-access natin sa pamamagitan ng student number, hindi po ng email address. Okay? So, linawin po natin yan. Hindi kailangan ang email address sa Blackboard. Huwag nyo muna, kalimutan nyo muna yung 1MCL. Hindi pa natin gagamitin ngayon yun. Ang hirap, medyo mahirap sa mga new applicants natin, yung new students natin, excited. Lahat gusto nang ma-open, lahat gusto i-try. Okay lang yan, pero basahin nyo yung guidelines para malaman ninyo yung step-by-step -step procedure at para hindi kayo nalilito. Ang Blackboard Learn student number ang kailangan. Hindi nyo kailangan dyan yung 1MCL email account. Will there be a physical graduation for grade 12? The Academic Council and the Operations Group decided to cancel their graduation that is originally scheduled this July because of the existing protocols and the precautionary measures against the COVID-19 pandemic. Meron po tayong 990 graduating grade 12 students at 700 college students. The only venue that we are considering for this event is the Philippine International Convention Center or PICC. Currently, it is a quarantine facility for COVID-19 patients. Gusto niyo po bang mag-graduation doon? Parang kami ay medyo wag muna. So, we will have, unfortunately, Sana po, maunawaan nyo po ang posisyon ng eskwelahan na we are supporting the calls of the government to postpone to cancel activities that will require people from congregating. With 3,000 people inside the plenary hall of the Philippine International Convention Center, napaka-high risk po niyan sa COVID-19 infection. We do not want, we cannot afford to risk the safety and health of our students and their families because of the graduation. So, wala pong graduation, both senior high school and college. But once we are allowed to hold the graduation next year, yung nakalimutan po, na, na inabutan ng walang graduation ngayong taon, sorry, hindi nakalimutan, na pag-abutan na walang graduation this July 2020, we will not let you spoil the moment. We will invite you in the next commencement exercises so that you can ceremonially receive your certificate and attend the commencement exercises. So, salamat po sa nagtanong. Sana po ay maunawaan natin yung desisyon ng skwelahan.
Ayan. Are there any more questions, Pearl? Uh, last set of questions, sir. Okay. What if the students and the parents do not have cell phone or computer and Wi-Fi? What approach can be used for them? Yeah. So, number one, may ano pa pala tayong parents na walang cell phone and computer? That's, that's interesting. At least that was raising the viewpoints. Mukhang, kagaya po ng sinasabi ko, we are entering the new normal. You might want to consider this as the perfect timing for you to save some portion of your resources to invest on these uh, gadgets. So we are entering the new normal. Ayaw, po, ayaw man po natin ito, pero ito po yung ating limited choice. So ayan po yung kaninang paulit-ulit kong sinasabi na baka po meron tayong adjustment sa ating mga parents, tayong mga parents, na mag-adjust tayo sa bagay na yan. Kailangan po natin ng computer, kailangan po natin ng cellphone, kailangan po natin ng internet. Hindi lang po yan para sa online learning. Napakadami pong magagamit dyan sa aspeto na yan. Ngayon, we would like to assure you that for you to survive online learning, hindi nyo po kailangan ng high-end na iPhone o Samsung Galaxy phone. Kahit po entry level o yung mga standard na smartphones may be available, na, that are available in the market may be used for online learning because Blackboard Learn may be downloaded from iOS and uh, Android. Pwede nyo pong gamitin doon yung Blackboard Learn. Hindi po kailangan ng high-end na cellphone. So, ulit po, we are entering the new normal Ayaw po nating sabihin na magastusan kayo. Pero yun po yung adjustment na dapat nating gawin at present. So, and I think that's a uh, significant, meaningful investment. Not only for online learning, but also for many other uses of information technology. How can MCL ensure that the school and shuttle service be COVID-free? Kasama po yan sa pipirmahan yung kontrata. Kami po ay nag a ng shuttle service providers. Alam niyo po ang problema, medyo marami tayong expectation sa maraming bagay. Pero kagaya po ng sabi ko, let us always remind ourselves that this new normal challenges us to reflect on our shared responsibility. Sabi ng isang magulang, paano kayo nakakatiyak na yung mga shuttle na yan ay malinis? Ano po ba alternative pag hindi sila nag-shuttle? Di ba po magkocommute? O, the same question. Paano kayo makakatiyak na yung sasakyan nilang public transportation ay COVID-free? Paano tayo makakatiyak na pag nagka-COVID yung tao, ay dun niya nakuha yan sa shuttle service o sa public transportation? Ano po ba ang tiyak sa panahon na ito? Ano po ba ang tiyak dito sa new normal? Palagay ko pa wala. Everything is uh, clothed with uncertainty. And the best that we can do as of the moment, sabi nga kanina, hindi tayo pwedeng basa lang matakot at huwag nang gumalaw, is to observe the precautionary measures, accept it, uh, among ourselves na the health and safety is a uh, primary responsibility of everybody. Ang swelahan po, titiyakin po hanggang kaya po namin na ma-inspeksyon yung mga shuttle service providers para po matiyak na sila po ay disinfected and sanitized. Yun nga lang po, kagaya po ng sinabi ko, kung yung bata naman po, pagbaba ng shuttle, ay pupunta ng 7-Eleven, pupunta ng mall, pupunta sa mga ka-eskwela, o kaya naman ay hindi nagmamask, ay eh mukhang hindi po yung shuttle at yung eskwela ng may kasalanan. Kaya papasok po ulit dyan yung ating shared responsibility. Responsibility of every person. Kaya nga ang DOH ang sinasabi, o oh, sige, ito yung pwedeng gawin sa mga public spaces, pero ang bawat individual, kailangan magugas ng kamay, kailangan mag-face mask, kailangan lumayo, mag-social distancing sa mga tao. Yun po ang ating mga effective measures. Again, shared responsibility. Meron po tayong tendency minsan na ibato sa, sa isang grupo yung a bulk of responsibility to ensure that everything will go fine. Unfortunately po, we can only do so much. 
We can only commit for disinfection and sanitation of our facilities. Pero yung outside environment po na medyo wala tayong control, doon po papasok yung responsibility ng parents at ng mga estudyante. Mahirap po sa COVID-19, hindi natin kita yung kalaban. So pagka nagkaroon ng COVID-19, kahit mag-contact tracing tayo, hindi naman tayo nakakatiyak na doon nila nakuha yung COVID-19 na yon. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin eh, kato kasi itong tao na to pumunta sa akin, binisita ako sa ang carrier. Hindi po natin alam yung mga bagay na yon. Pwede lang po natin gawin ay mag-ingat at gawin natin yung ating responsibility not only for ourselves but also for the community. Again, there are adjustments that needed to be uh, under, uh, undertaken. There are certain uh, measures that we need to do individually and collectively. Kaya nang sabi, heal as one. And I think kailangan po natin balikan at laging alalahanin yung bagay na yun. Maraming salamat po sa nagtanong. Hindi nyo po yan itatanong kung hindi po kayo nag-aalala. Hindi nyo po yan itatanong kung hindi po kayo concerned sa safety and health ng inyong anak. Ganon din po ang Malayan Colleges Laguna. Ganon din po ang karamihan sa mga educational institutions. Isang malaking dagok po, isang malaking uh, uh, sakit po sa damdamin ng school administrators kung sasabihin na nakuha yan sa eskwelahan sa kabila ng napakaraming measures na ginagawa nila para mapigilan ang infection sa loob ng eskwelahan. Pero kagaya po nang sabi ko, hindi po natin nakikita ang virus, hindi po tayo nakakatiya kung saan po ito nakuha. Pero ganun po man po, gawin, gawin natin ang pwede natin gawin, uh, maging responsable tayo hanggang sa ating makakaya para mapigilan natin ang infection. Is that the last question? Yes po sir, last question na po yun. Ayan, so maraming maraming salamat po sa mga tanong. Ito pong uh, ating uh, sharing ngayon, yung ating uh, viewpoints. Meron po yung recording that's automatic with Microsoft Teams. We will be sharing the link via YouTube and Facebook. You can check them out later para pwede nyong balikan. Kasama na rin yan ng new normal. So, uh, muli po, maraming salamat sa pag-attend. Sana po ay meron kayo napulot sa discussion. Marami rin po kami napulot sa inyo sa pamamagitan ng pag-share ng inyong mga questions. Again, para mas luminaw po yung inyong pagkaunawa on how MCL can deliver alternative and flexible learning uh, delivery options. Join us on Saturday. That's May 23, 9.30 to 12 noon as we, uh, ha as we give you a walkthrough of MCL's Blackboard Learn and Blackboard Collaborate, which our new students and our uh, new students will be using. Ginagamit na po yan ang mga current students namin. And for our parents to appreciate the capability of Balayan Colleges Laguna to uh, hold these online classes, this online learning at this time of the new normal. On behalf of our president, Dr. Reynaldo B. Bea, who is also the president of Mapua University, our administrators, faculty members, employees, the admissions team. Maraming salamat po, magandang araw po, at sana po ay manatili tayo sa ating mga bahay at manatili tayong malusog at ligtas under the new normal. Kaya po natin ito, gawin lang po natin yung ating mga responsibility and let us support one another so that we can cope with this new normal. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat and God bless po.